Hey, Jacob. Oh, hey, Matt. What are we driving today? It's a bloody Tesla Model 3 facelifted. Oh, it's the Highland. And Jacob, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually finally get the hype of this thing. I just thought, it's a facelift. Like, you know, is it, is it a Mazda facelift where yeah. they just change the grill insert? Like, we've seen some facelifts in our time, and this is a facelift. This is a proper facelift. In fact, a lot of it is just all new. So much so that I actually get the hype about this thing. I really didn't get it before. I just thought everyone was talking out of their ass. I'm not going to lie. And you probably did too. Not to mention on the skin, it's just huge. So much so that I think that this is by far, by far the best EV you can buy at the moment. Whoa. Yeah. That's a big claim. In terms of value, in terms of what you get, it's phenomenal. So today we're going to take you for a full exterior tour of the new Model 3 Highland. What has changed as part of this facelift? Because as I said, it's a lot. We're going to see all the interior changes. We're going to check out its practicality. We're going to launch this thing, see just how fast it is from zero to hundred kilometers an hour. Is it as fast as Tesla claim? And then of course, we're going to give this thing a lot of source, drive the absolute snot out of it and give you our final verdict on the new updated Tesla Model 3 and why it is so good and definitely worth the hype, in my opinion. Maybe you'll disagree. Let's check it out. Let's do it. Alrighty, we'll talk about the exterior changes in a second. Let's talk about price though, because this thing has gone up by 4,500 Australian dollars. It's, uh... Look, as far as price rises go, it's not the worst. No, it's not the worst. The reason I hesitated though is because they've deleted some things. Some things which I think are very valuable themselves, but we'll come back to that in a second. And so today we're testing the base model, the rear wheel drive, but it's honestly the one I would recommend. It's 67 grand, including on-road costs. And even though it has a different battery technology underneath, in some ways it's better than what you'll find in the higher grades because you can actually charge this to 100% without degrading the battery versus the other ones which you don't want to charge more than 80 to 90%. But we'll come back to that. Let's talk about the way this thing looks, man. Dude, it looks so nice. It looks so much better. I, I genuinely did not like the looks of the Model 3. I said it in my Model Y long range review, which you can check out below if you want to learn more about the grade above this. But essentially, it was just uggo. And this is so much nicer. So I love these headlights here. You've got this cool new daytime running light, turning signals there too. Very bright LED lights. In fact, it's matrix LEDs now across the range. So it's good that you're not really losing out, even if you do go for that lower grade. Now, you might think the front looks pretty identical to before, but it is actually very different. In fact, it's actually actually quite a lot lower and more aerodynamic. So this thing now has an insane drag coefficient of like 0.215. It's really, really good. And that does help with range. In fact, it gets more range now, despite keeping a lot of the same internal components under the skin. Although some of those have also changed, but we'll again come back to that. One of the things that Tesla have said that they are doing better now is build quality, fit and finish. And in a lot of ways it is. You've got like equal panel gaps now around, which is great. But paint is very clearly a different story because here you can actually see it peeling off the front. And this is like a brand new uh, press car. It's done a thousand, two thousand kilometers, really not very many. Um, so to see that is actually quite shocking. But if we look past that, at least for now, here you will also see a redesigned front bumper. That's lacking any sensors, man. Yeah, and I think Tesla just continue to chop off things that they don't really need to chop off. Yeah, apart from the monetary value for Tesla in saving costs, I don't see any benefit in doing that at all. Now, if you want to use sensors to park, it doesn't use use radar anymore. It just uses the front camera. That is not a good system. It doesn't work yet. Maybe it will in future updates, but as of now, it will allow you to crash into things very easily, or it will think that you're about to crash into something when you're not going to. So don't know what's happened there. That's a really bad thing, but I don't know. Hopefully that gets better with time, man. I'm sure it will. And, and that's the good thing about Tesla. Like they do have over the air updates that massively improve the performance or the, the way it drives. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's know what you guys think though of that down in the comment section below. But I don't know, man, to cap that off, it looks fantastic. It really, really does. I love what they've done with the design. Let's check out the side. Let's do it. Alrighty, let's talk about the side because again, a lot of changes here too. So these portal wheels, they're now like this cool turbine-y effect to what you'll find on the top of the range. That's just a cover though, but still looks really, really nice. 18 inch wheels and they're wrapped in these new Michelin E Primacy tires that have been specially designed for the Model 3. Again, that's a new addition. I really like the 
looks of it. You can take it off if you want to, but that actually will just kind of ruin your range a bit because it creates vortices across the side. So yeah, not really worth it, I think anyway. You got a camera here. So because they've deleted that camera, you get seven now, six on the outside, one on the inside. You've got the same flush door handles here that are a little bit annoying, I still find, to open and close, but you know, they're fine. You get used to them. Also, you'll see there, frameless windows that are double glazed. So when you double glaze them and then you add the acoustic glass on top, yeah, it's really quiet. Again, you'll see that. You got another camera over here too. So this thing is also uh, capable of full self-driving. That's what they call it. Of course, that has not been approved in Australia. You can buy it, but you'd be a bit of a numb nuts if you did, because that's $10,100 and you get almost nothing. At least in Australia. Except for a promise. No privacy glass, which does kind of suck, especially at this price point. And otherwise very swoopy, coopy, and kind of the same, but still a lot of subtle changes here on the side, but the back, Love that, let's check that out, let's do it. All right guys, let's talk about the rump derriere and what has changed. Well, the tail lights actually look sick, man. Pretty much everything that they could change, they've changed. <laughs> yeah, kind of, but they've kept that minimalist style. I love the Tesla badge here now at the back. People were after marketing this, uh, just putting it on themselves and now they've made it standard. So it's cool that either Elon or whoever works at Tesla actually listen and thinks that that's cool. I think it's cool too. Down the bottom, you get a nice diffuser there as well, but otherwise it's very minimalist. I love the look of the back, man. It looks Really so nice. much nicer. Again, let us know what you guys think. Check this out, Jacob. On three. One, two, three. Power tailgate. Oh. It's actually got more space now in the bum of this thing, which is pretty unreal. So because of suspension and subframe changes here at the back specifically, they've added more room. So now you get 594 liters of boot space, which is a lot, but that does include this massive amount of underfloor storage. So I guess keep that in mind. You can of course drop the rear seats and get even more space back there. Still a miss though, that you don't get any sort of charging cable included with your Model 3. That was again deleted. Just take it away. Um, don't love that. I don't love how Tesla keep just taking away stuff. They also took away lumbar support for the passenger and that was a little while ago, but still like now my back hurts. And of course you do get a frunk and uh, we could even fit Jacob in there. It's massive, 88 liters of space. It's not carpeted. That's another thing that Tesla took away. But anyway, it still it, feels very comfortable it, to sit in. Yeah, I bet it does. A lot of space, better than pretty much all of its competitors. Jacob, let's check out the interior. Let's do it. All right. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the interior now. Jacob, what has changed? Frankly, too much to list. <laughs> there is a lot of changes in here. So first of all, it actually looks rather different. So I love the new ambient lighting that kind of runs around. At first I thought it just looks a bit silly, but when you're driving here, the bonnet is low slung because it is lower now. You almost feel like you're sitting on the floor and driving around and there's like a little bit of cool ambient lighting. I don't know. It's, it's a pretty, it's pretty cyberpunk. It's a it's a cool experience, guys. The other really big change, which might not seem like that much, but it is major, is the fabric here on the doors. So this used to be uh, wood in the black interior. You can also get this with the white interior. Oh, everyone was so upset in the Model Y when I was like, oh, don't get the white interior. And guess what, Jacob? We still wouldn't get the white no. interior. Yeah, white does show dirt, smudges and stains easier than black seats. Look, if you've got a three year rental, who cares? But also, you know, if you if you want to die on that hill, feel free. Let me know in the comment section below. But yes, the paneling in here, along with other changes like acoustic glass, means that the interior space is now a lot quieter quieter, like a lot quieter. It also looks nice, it feels pretty good. It's very in vogue at the moment, this kind of textile. So yeah, I don't know, I don't mind it. In fact, I like it. Would you go as far as to say you love it? Thanks, you just made the bloody steering wheel greasy. Big changes, speaking of this steering wheel. So first of all, it's now a D-cut design, very sporty. Eh? You've also got buttons here. You've also now lost your stalks, which at first I was like, Ugh. I didn't want that. But guess what? I'm kind of loving it. So your indicator buttons are now on the steering wheel. It's kind of weird to me, man. I'm a manual driver, all right? <laughs> Can I rephrase that for yeah. you? Yeah. You're a real man. I'm a real man. Yeah. Because I drive manual. Yeah. And so usually I'm driving with, frankly, only my right hand. Like this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So how am I supposed to indicate? <laughs> you know what, Jacob? Thankfully, there's no manual shifter here. You keep your hands on the steering wheel. Ah. It also means that you've got your PRND, your Prince, Reverse, Neutral, and Drive. That's actually on the screen now, and it's got a new mode, which is called Predictive. Uh, predictive. 
shift. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it anyway. So using the cameras, it will scan the environment and detect whether you wanna reverse or drive. Again, maybe a little bit gimmicky, but the future is apparently that you don't have to even think about it, it the car will just do. And by the way, if your screen for some reason is just not working, you've actually got buttons up here on the roof. Oh. What have you done? Turns out the hazards live up there too. And by the way, on the right hand side, that is your controls now for your autopilot in case you were wondering. The screen. My goodness. My goodness. So you might not think that it's changed at first glance, but it actually has. So the bezels have become thinner. More importantly, they've added more processing power behind it. And it is just phenomenal, man. It I just... think it's like the first, was it like 120 hertz screen we've seen on the car? At least it feels like it. It feels like 120 hertz. I don't know. It just, it's so good. Color accurate, bright. It doesn't smudge easily either which is really good we're driving a seal at the moment as well in fact we did a comparison that's come out before this review so if you want to go watch that i'll link that down below it's got some things that it doesn't need to so for example if you want to open the glove box you have to do it through the display if you want to adjust the steering wheel you have to do it through the display the aircon controls and i'm not talking about just your temperature if you want to change the direction of the air literally the vents you can't do that manually you have to use the display but these are things that you do very rarely or once in a blue moon or never at all i have I haven't touched the aircon controls since I had it. That's and true, and I remember once you broke my air vents trying to adjust the air. So you really wanted I, to get that in I there. Think, <laughs> you I really. think uh, it's actually, it would have been better Bro, if I had electronic uh, controls. <laughs> you cut me off just to get that in there. You feel better? Yeah, I do. Ah, fair enough. I got it off my chest. These maps, by the way, that's Google Maps, and it's really smart. So for example, if you need to charge the car and you put Tesla Supercharger as your destination, it'll actually precondition the battery along the way. Another thing I don't like though, Jacob, there's no um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you're a Waze user like myself, I like to know where the speed cameras are, God forbid. Well, guess what? You, you just can't. You're Bad luck. Of... Also, some fun gimmicky stuff. Um, you can make fart sounds using the emissions tester, even when you indicate. And you know what? You can make it sound like it's coming from a specific seat. <laughs> yeah, Jacob and I have giggled about that quite a lot. Other things too, you've got like beach buggy too. So you've got like a driving simulator. Don't love that. Wouldn't Do it call, on the grass. Wouldn't call it a simulator actually. Call it like a Mario Kart ripoff. That's really what it is. Pretty much. So you use the steering wheel to control it. And unfortunately, that does mean that you're just going to rub down your tires. So I really don't recommend you play that. Um, at least using this. But again, just a really good screen. Love it. What else do I like, Jacob? The seats. Oh, the seats. So these are actually new for the Highland. They've got more bolstering. They're a lot more breathable now, which is important because now it adds cooled seats. Finally, in Australia, there's like a number one necessity. Maybe not in other parts of the world, but here we really need it and you finally get it. They also feel a lot better, man. They don't feel like that kind of fake vegan leather that they have before. They're still fake leather, don't get me wrong, but at least now it's actually like... It's premium fake leather. It's premium fake leather, and it does feel very good, very supportive. You can adjust them in a bajillion ways, so that's very good. You've got your wireless chargers here, which is seriously one of the best in the business. It's just, you put your phone there and it, it goes. This whole center console has been changed as well, so now you've got a couple of hardy holes. You've got a couple of cup holders there, a lot of storage in there with a 12 volt socky wocky. You've also got a nice soft center armrest that, I don't know, build quality could possibly be a bit better it's kind of a bit rattly a bit rattly a bit squeaky but inside it's all felt lined and you get a USB-C port within there too you get massive door bins and I will say another change but it's kind of negative is the sound system it's actually been downgraded now for the base model it just doesn't sound that great it's okay like it's fine it definitely sounds a lot better if you step up to the long range and I'm sure it will for the performance when that eventually comes as well or ludicrous as it's tipped to be named also get that Tesla sunroof thing here it is very tinted today which is nice but it's still radiates quite a lot of heat. So that does use up more battery because it needs to cool more of the interior. I wish it just came with a cover as standard. I think it's a bit silly, it doesn't, but you can get them aftermarket and they're relatively cheap as well. So it's not a huge issue. It just should come with it, I think. All right, Jacob. Time for the back seat. Time for the back seat. Let's do it. All righty, Jacob, listen to this. Are you listening? I'm, I'm ready. Oh! <laughs> So they've changed a lot of the car underneath and also kind of in the doors inside. Apart from new paneling inside the doors to make it quieter, they've actually added these new latches down the bottom just to make the doors more rigid, more sturdy, and it works really well. Maybe too many doors were uh, rattling around. One more time, one more time. Ooh! 
It's just like a deep, bassy thud. Now, I'm five foot 11. As far as the EV goes, it's um, not the best. So don't have a lot of leg room, it's fine. Toe room is also okay if I jam my feet back, but if I move them forward, I've got nothing. And headroom as well is actually very good thanks to this giant sunroof, which by the way, does kind of taper off and moves into your rear windscreen. I don't know how to it's describe it. It's just one it. big piece of glass. Yeah, it's just, very cool. It's really cool, it works so well. Again, the seats, they have been updated as part of this facelift, a lot of bolstering to them. Can pull down this. Oh, you get a nice center armrest with a couple of cup holders and I love how the headrest acts as like a brace. Here's though, Jacob, why I'm loving, loving this update. In fact, one of my favorite things ever and I didn't think I would like it. And that is this, this display right here. Because finally, I feel like you get the Tesla experience, but in the back seats. You're always kind of missing out on it. Like you had manual air vents, which you can see in our recent Model Y review, where it was just like a little bit disappointing, but now it's just the full Tesla experience. So it essentially mimics the display up front. You can watch things on it like Netflix or YouTube. You can play games on it even. So your kids actually have something to do, which is really cool, I think. I think it'll save a lot of parents a lot of headaches or until they start adjusting your seat. Well, yeah, that's until they start adjusting the passenger seat because you can now do that, which is a really cool feature, very premium, very luxury, and you wouldn't see that in a base model anywhere, but you know, it could be annoying if your kids find that menu. You also have heated seats in the rear, which is unreal, especially at this price point. They're not cooled, but they never are, so I'm, I'm super duper impressed. Also your air vents, as I said, they're now automatically adjusting, so you can get Tesla to set it where they think, or you can move it around yourself, which is just fantastic. Couple of USB fast chargers there as well. Didn't mention this, a little folio pocket and pretty massive door bins in the back too with electronic door openings. I don't know, man. It's just, it feels like such a complete package now, especially now that that's here. I feel like the back seats just aren't missing out like they used to. No, I mean, apart from that slightly compromised seating position, I think it's a winner. Yeah, actually I didn't mention that. My legs are not at a good angle and that is because the battery lives in the floor and it's really low down so that isn't great but let me know what you guys think about the interior changes for the model 3 there are a lot of changes do you think that they're a good thing a bad thing curious to hear what you think i think they're awesome what do you think Jacob? oh love them yeah. so good enough yapping it's time to launch this thing let's test it zero to 100 baby let's bloody do it all righty daddy jacob it's time we've only got chill or standard for acceleration. I don't Sorry, want to chill standard. today, bro. We're gonna stamp the I throttle. I want to standard this thing. Oh. We're gonna stamp the throttle. Are you gonna fist me? Let's see what this will do, zero to 100, baby. Is the drag coefficient helpful for speed? The zero to 100 is apparently 6.1 seconds. Let's That's... test it out. Ah! Oh. Actually, it's quite, come on. It just keeps, go... it just keeps going. It's quite talky, quite talky. Whoa! Oh! oh. That's pretty good. I'll take that, zero to 100 in 6.26 seconds. All right. Let's drive this thing normally. Let's do it. But before that, a warning. <laughs> ah, bro, I don't want to talk about it. Guys, it was at this point, we knew, we knew we f***ed up. Uh, this camera wasn't recording. So yeah, Jacob's here. Don't worry, he is here. I'm That's not that. just a disembodied voice. You're not going to see him. No. For the next few minutes. Enjoy okay, bye. my voice. Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. It's time to see how the change is worth it. Foot down. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's still fast. It's still fast. And even though this is the base model, it's still fast. So, powering this thing is a single rear motor. Puts out 208 kilowatt of power. 340? 340. Newton meters, I think. Talk. Yes. It's always a bit iffy with EVs, isn't it? Well, Tesla don't actually have an official claim for either of those, but this is what we've gotten from Red Book. Oh, give it another two. Oh, listen to that. That's, bro, I can barely hear that. Bro, that is quiet. So one of the main changes, oh, there's so many changes, to be honest. Under the skin, it's almost an entirely new car, but one of the biggest changes that you notice immediately is that NVH, or noise, vibration, and harshness, essentially how loud it is inside the car, has reduced by 20%. Bro, I'm mind blown. But they also say it's 20 to 50%, so I'm a little confused. In certain situations. We're gonna take the 20% here, but it's quiet. Yeah, I think they've reduced the horn sound by 50%. Whoa! <laughs> it's fast as oh well. My god. Oh. oh my god! But it just handles so well, and I think it's also because of that revised suspension, which might I add, might I add. So goddamn comfortable. It is so, so, so much better 
than before. I don't really remember, I'll be honest, what it was before, but this feels nice. Let me tell you, it was pretty bad. It's re it was really crashy, it, it was really firm, really stiff. This has somehow striked like the perfect balance to the point where- Struck. It fit. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna crash us into a tree because of that. Strike me into a tree. It's just done a really, I don't know man, it's just like, Perfect. Honestly, I'm, I'm mind blown like by this. Perfect. It's really good. Steering has not changed. Uh, 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 oh! But what if you put it in sport? Oh, sport. Oh, then it gets heavy as. Oh, jeez. Oh, this thing is actually like surprisingly quick considering it is a base model. It really has all the performance you need. This is why I tell people just get the bloody base model in this. And, yeah. and yes, you get, you know, the a base bit model sounds. Range as well. Slightly, right? But it has gone up. It's gone up 22 kilometers. <laughs> Some would say. What is it now? 520, 519? I don't know, it's like 512 <laughs> or something. Oh! oh. <laughs> and the all wheel drive has like 630 kilometers of range, which yes. is pretty insane. But the difference is that this has the LFP battery, which is lithium ion phosphate. That one you can charge up to 100% safely each time and it won't degrade the battery. But the nickel. Manganese cobalt. Manganese cobalt. I always really struggle with that. You should only charge that to about 80, maybe 90%. Yeah. Otherwise, it will absolutely impact on the battery's health over time. But that one does get faster DC charging. It does. So this is 170 kilowatt fast charging. That's like 250. Having said that, the range ends up to be kind of very similar. Mm. If you follow the best practices. Although, if you charge that to 100%, yes, of course, you will get that one further. Yeah. Still, this one has incredible efficiency. If we go to our oh, oh, trips, oh, oh no. This to, ride to hasn't screens. been that great, but overall, 13.4 kilowatt hours is insane. I'm just confused because why are they giving us in watt hours per kilometer? Because that's actually technically what we're supposed to use in Australia. Ah, oh, okay. 13.2 kilowatt hours. That's pretty damn good. That's unbelievable. That's exactly their claim. So you will get everything you need. Tickle. You'll get the 512 kilometers or whatever it is. Are you ready for Saucy Corner? Are you ready for Saucy Corner? Here we go, I'm mummies. Ready. Oh. <laughs> It's kind of gentle. It's a gentle acceleration. But then it just keeps going forever. We also have new tyres. Oh. oh, eco oh tyres. We Whoa. Oh, we both Shit. remarked at that time. And oh my god. That was so smooth. So much grip. Oh. oh. <laughs> Whoa. That was fast, man. <laughs> For dude, a UV. Dude. Uh, look, wow. Man. That's impressive. I'm. Super, super impressed. Oh, also, another thing they've updated, which they really needed to, okay, because it was pretty bad before. They've, they've made a slight adjustment to the autopilot, and I don't know what the hell they've done, but it disconnects a lot less for me now than it did before. We double press this. <gasps> oh, drive me, Tesla, drive oh, me. It, thank you, AI overlords. It will ban you. You will get banned if you do silly stuff. It's a bit of a slap on the wrist. But I it? found it's doing it a lot less. So that's probably an over, over the air update that they've passed through. But also they've upgraded the actual hardware that sits behind it. So it's just better. I feel like everything's gotten an upgrade. This is a big facelift, man. Dude, this is like- It's one of the biggest facelifts I think we've ever done. Yeah, often it's just like a grill insert. Yeah, it's like, oh, look at the new headlights. Look at this, look at this, don't do this at home. Whoa. This, this doesn't have, by the way, the uh, full self-driving package, which is $10,100. <laughs> and I'll be honest, if you get it, I think you're a bit of a nuff. Maybe, you know, maybe it's like in the future it'll be useful. Maybe, but in Australia it gives you literally nothing. It's such no. a waste of time and money, don't do it. Yeah, at the moment it's terrible. And the, this is the base system and the base system and it gives you like everything you absolutely need. So yeah, really impressed, man. Uh, Honestly, man, this car and, and like just the the NVH, again, to harp on that, it's so good. It's quiet in it's here, It's so man. quiet. Like that acoustic glass, you're not getting any wind sound. The road noise is nothing. Like it's so comfortable. All it's, this new material inside of here, more, pa more paneling in the doors. Unreal. You know what, bro? I would go as far as to say this feels luxury. Alrighty, guys. Final thoughts on the... Tesla Model 3 Highland Jacob, you first. It's bloody amazing. It seriously is. Um, I think before I was always disappointed by how this thing kind of drove, more so because of the suspension. It was just really quite uncomfortable. But now that experience is simply unreal. It's unmatched, especially at this price point. And I didn't even mention guys, but to top it all off, you've got the Tesla app where you can literally control everything about this car. And I think it really seals the deal in a lot of ways because you are very connected to your car. You can check its location at any time 
time doing a lot of stuff through that app. It is really impressive. Even use it as a key. I have, I'm a bit of a pleb at the moment and I don't have access to it. So I'm just using a little key card, but you are a bit of a pleb. I am a That's bit of a pleb. That's the first thing you've said that I agree with. Back to this though. It is, uh, it is just unreal. I think it's a, a massive, massive upgrade over before. And when I was quite disappointed with the Tesla Model Y, if you go watch that review and you definitely should, you'll see the differences because really that's just a jacked up Model 3. But again, let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Would you buy a Tesla Model 3? And as always, if you're in the market for a new car and you want the absolute best pricing, head to carswells.com forward slash buy. We'll get you the best price for cars that are actually in stock. Yeah, we will. Unless it's a Tesla who are uh, direct to consumer. That's true. But everyone else, we will do it. Yeah.